it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, as you said, it's a, really an art. And, um, and that brings actually to me in terms of, um, as an example, or in the real, um, what's happening around us, and especially in Europe, and you have been so closely working um, um, uh, with the refugees and with the migrant crisis that's happening right now. So please do share. That's not. It's a real manifestation in in one way. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, how do we see it? How do we? Um, yes. How do we um, uh, respond to it? Uh, yes. You know, knowing that, knowing as you said that yes. we are the space of compassion, the space of non-separation, yes. and yet seeing. Um, so, uh, please, please share something about that. Yes. Well, you know, you know first of all, I was trained already in my earlier years through the development agency I was able to work with. And one of the most awful situations I was able to encounter was the Bihari camps in Bangladesh. Mm. I think it was in the 70s. And the way these people were living in this hut, in the dirt, having no facilities of toilets or water, it was so shocking for me. Or also in Calcutta, in the streets, you know, where you see all these poor people. It was really a lesson for me, first of all, to be just able to be there and not run away because being brought up in Switzerland I didn't know that there was so much suffering in the world. And then of course with the learning in spirituality and um, who I am you meet not only the outer shadow you meet your inner shadow and as we are not separated, there is a consciousness in a way of the complete humanity together. There is a collective consciousness and we are part in that collective consciousness. So in the dream work I do with people, or I was doing with myself, I encountered in myself, being a refugee, being somebody who was able to murder, being somebody who was able to do atroci atrocities to other people, and I had to really face it in myself. That means to put away any hue of separation and let it completely come into your presence and heart and uh, know, ah, oh, that's a part of me. Being able to accept it and also to understand why people come to that point where they kill other people when you look at their childhood, when you look at their circumstances of life, when you look at different, over generations, conflicts that have not been solved, solved that we know out nowadays, even in the genetics, it is reinformed to the next generation. When you have this understanding, you're able just to have compassion. Even with the most terrible person. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're able to differentiate very clearly and stand up for it to say, that is not right. It is destructive. It's not building up life. I'm not going in that direction supporting any kind of, you know, atrocities or exploitation even. Um, that is a 
hindering. Now I was a little bit long, I come back to your question. Yeah. No, it was, hel it was very helpful. Thank you for... Refugees. Now yeah. we have a new wave in Europe of refugees looking for shelter, looking for support, looking for a better life. A lot of people from Syria, but also from Northern Africa or Middle Africa, and there are still some people coming from Afghanistan and Pakistan. Well, um, looking at the Middle East situation, it is clear that many of these people um, had such hard, life-threatening um, life conditions that they think, of course, Europe has an easier way of living. We want also peace. We want to have a healthy family. They should have education, the children, all that. So all these movies going on. If you analyze it, it's a complex system. In this Syria, it's easy to say. But when you go more to other countries, Northern Africa countries, there are different aspects, I think, that make people move. This is another subject. We have to, to look at also to be not so in general saying they are welcome. They are welcome, the one that really need support. Yes. There was a time also where I felt that refugees, it was like mm, there were different motivations, intentions behind it. And it's not always clear. What is what? Are they fleeing from certain conditions which they find maybe too hard? Then of course television and all these films are not very helpful which transport a life in luxury and I don't know what, yeah. which is just, you know, um, going in the total development of the Western country into a wrong direction. It's too materialistic. So there are themes, I think, yeah. one or subjects one has to look at now from our side, from the European side. First of all, people where their lives are really threatened should be welcomed. And um, now we have in Europe starting in a way a different mood from the population coming in where they are getting afraid of too much foreign values, too much foreign culture, too much uh, strange religious practices and so on, and um, it is quite a challenge now um, for the politicians in one way to balance it and also um, for the government, for the parties not to get into regression. Regression would mean for me to go into a mood of nationalism or a movement of nationalism, closing the borders, um, it is a dangerous movement, I see, in many European countries coming more and more into existence. So what to do? You see, of course, we are in a way part of the problem with the migration. 
as we had a politic of colonialism. Uh, we had for a long time we were exploiting many of these countries and that helps of course to make young people having no perspective, no jobs. It's not only our, how I say, um, we are not the, so, the only responsible for the whole situation, but also part of it. Then I think they also have locally um, ethnic themes, they have um, problems also with um, the patriarchal systems also um, where they exploit their own people partially. I see that for example in Zimbabwe with uh, President Mugabe and all that. Now when you all see these different aspects. This for me can actually only happen because we still are rooted in the three myths of separation. The whole way we behave in this setting up is rooted in separation. And the first aspect of separation is that I think or feel or define myself as something completely independent. Uh, consciousness is inside somehow separated from the rest of the world. That's the first myth of separation. And if that one stands, then the second myth of separation that the world is separated of me is a consequence. And then there is, of course, with humanity, we have something, a knowledge inside of us that we know there is something beyond knowing, beyond us as a human being. Sometimes it is called that, or Brahman, or God, or Takan Vakan or Vakan Takan or whatever, the names are different. And also there we feel separated. So these three kinds of separation gives us a world and self perspective that brings forth this kind of um, way of living. So that is for me the root yeah. of all. And we don't have only the problem of the refugees. We have climate, we have resources, we have drinking water. There are so many issues, financial systems, and, and, and economies. And yeah. you, there, there are so many issues we have now globally, not only in Europe or, you know, and it shows that we come to the end of this area of separation. The solution for all these problems we have nowadays, in my understanding, can only emerge of unity, of oneness, knowing that I am one with all that is. Knowing that you and I are not two. That the world and I is inseparably one. And that that has no name is one reality without two. So yeah. I think it is also a chance, the challenge we have nowadays globally a chance for us human beings to grow, to make this, the step from the first tier of separation with Ken Wilber to the second, into the second, where we can stay or have an integral perspective of non-separation. Beautiful. Thank you. I, I was feeling the same when I was there in, in Cali, like um, 
And so thank you for, for affirming and for sharing what you shared. It just like deeply resonated with my with my heart, with my being, which kind of kind of uh, thought, but you know, just you so beautifully put that in the words um, and express that. So maybe uh, I can just yeah, add yeah, how yeah, we went there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this is now an understanding yeah. <clears throat> which is for me not an intellectual. Yeah. It is a whole being understanding. Exactly. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's not just a yeah. concept. Yeah. So we were 12 people yeah. going to Athens and then being guided by um, an agency uh, that helps the refugees to go to Piraeus because yeah. it was a no organization land. Yeah. All the organization were out. Only Médecins Sans Frontières, there were two med medical doctors there for 6,000 people. Yeah. The rest, nobody was there because it should not be there. Yeah. So we went there and we meditated every morning together so that we had this spirit being rooted, you know, in nothingness all and with an open heart. So we went there to see our friends. Hmm? Yeah. I mean, when I say our friends, yeah. when you look from heart to heart, yeah. every human being yeah. is a friend in a way, or a sister and a brother. There is no separation. Yes. So we went there and, you know, just being there with this presence and love where you can look at the human being and look even deeper, not seeing only um, what they need mm. now um, but also see the creativity they have actually yeah. or the possibilities uh, they have even in that very limited and very difficult situation and of course to help to smooth in a way the daily difficulties living so closely to each other having no space having no real shelter having not good food, having only two taps for water, being 1,500 people living in one hall together and trying to relieve and help and bathing babies, you know, and, and just do very practical things. Um, that is one side. And then just being there, listening to their stories. And, um, yeah, it was very interesting for me. Um, it was actually, we just offered one week of our life energy to, to share, which is, of course, n never, that's nothing, it's not enough, of course, in one way. But I wanted with some of my students and some people that are around me to, to do that so that it is not a theory but it is a practical encounter um, and it changes your life when you have this experience not only through television yeah. but in real because then you know it exists and it is that and that feeling and um, so yeah and in the evening we shared the experiences of yeah. today so that, that we could integrate it as well yeah. and the next day we started again.